So today I'm gonna to do a video on our camper. We just have uncovered it and we are getting ready to go on our 4th of July camping trip. Um, I'm, this, I'm basically just gonna do kind of a, uh, like a little tour and talk about it a little bit. This is a 2018 model. We bought it new. Uh, it was purchased at Lakeside RV, which is in Anderson, South Carolina on Highway 24. It's a Forest River Wildwood Extra Light. Two propane tanks versus I know some of them have one. And going into this, just keep in mind that this is what I would consider really a base model camper. They do have some smaller ones, but for this size, you know, it's really basic. There, there's not any bells and whistles really. Uh, it does have the electronic awning. Uh, it's got a couple of speakers outside. We use those sometimes. Kind of nice to have. It's got storage that just passes through underneath. It's not a lot of room, but it's some. It comes pre-rigged so you can hook up a solar charge panel if you wanted to. It does have electronic leveling jacks. Those are very nice. Um, I know some people that have campers that you have to manually put those jacks down and uh, you know you can use a power drill or whatever to do so but it still seems like kind of a pain so I'm glad we have those that's one thing I really like about this one I also like the solid step as I'm a big guy and uh, it's a lot nicer than some some that just mount up under it and pull out they're really flimsy when I try to walk on them and they wobble a lot and there's also, you know, there's the, the fear aspect that it might give way. So I really do like that solid step. Here's the model number of mine. 261BHXL. And as far as on the outside, you do have a, a couple power or a single power outlet here which we do use normally when we're out camping we'll put a little uh lifetime table sit it right here up under the awning and set up you know coffee pot and things like that it's just another switch to lower the jack of course here's the cover i just took off of it i'll step around it hopefully without falling on the back so i did install the furion backup camera now basically the mount was already on this so it was very easy to install you basically just take a plate off and hook up the wire put the screws in and it's ready to go so that was super simple and very easy to use and it's very beneficial so you can see behind you when you're backing up i added this plate so you can put some accessories on here i originally got it to put a bicycle rack but also have like a little tray type thing that can hold a cooler. It's come in handy before. Oh, of course there's the uh, hot water heater on the back. Then you have uh, cable and satellite hookups um, down at the bottom here. Of course you've got your sewage drains, gray and black water drains, and low line drains, um, you know, in the winter. And some of this stuff, if you have a camper, you know, you already know all this stuff. If you don't, then, you know, you might get a little information out of it. But um, in the winter time, or some people after every trip will take the plugs off of those and let their water drain out. Power cable, and it tucks away all in here pulls out, extends out several feet. I think it probably comes out about eight feet, something like that. This one's a 30 amp. It just has the single uh, AC unit. Most of the time I found when you have the dual AC units, then you get into the 50 amp. Back here is just the vent for where the refrigerator is. Moving on along. This is a vent that you actually, some of them are automatic, some of them are manual, but when you go and use the vent over the range, you have to open this up so that the exhaust can come out of it. 
and then you pop it closed if it'll pop close there we go finally pop it back closed after you're done so bugs and things can't get in there uh water connection and this is for the water uh built-in tank if you want to fill that up if you're going somewhere that doesn't have a water connection which i've never used when i got this i did put new tires on it um, i put heartland tires on it the tires that came on it are like a korean type tire that's very cheap um, i had seen videos and talked to people and had a lot of horror stories about that type thing they said you know you basically within a year or so want to go ahead and get new tires even though they're not worn down just to kind of prevent a blowout uh, i've had people tell me they've bought a brand new camper and then going down the road within like a year's time had like a tire just pop on them so i just went ahead and replaced them they're not that expensive uh, the options that I had, I went to Discount Tire, and the options I had were Heartland, which they had in stock, and then they had a Goodyear, which they had to order. wasn't really a price difference in them, so I just, they, they told me the Heartland are very good as well and hold up well, so I just went with those. Uh, there's the exhaust for the heating system. Uh, they always recommend that you get these little covers and put over them because wasp and things like to get in there and make nest. kind of going around there's the pass-through storage that connects to the other side and there's the whole camper kind of lengthwise I'll kind of let you see the uh, sticker here as far as the uh, uh, has the VIN number and everything uh, the date says 2017 but we bought it in 2018 I was it actually says on the registration 2018 <laughs> So I really hadn't paid attention to that sticker, but anyway, uh, tells like loading information, all that type thing, tires, if anybody's interested. Okay, let's walk inside real quick. So it's a little bit of a mess because it's been sitting all winter and we're just now getting it set up and ready to go for our 4th of July trip. Um, queen size bed, if anybody doesn't know this already, uh, a queen size bed and an RV is same uh, width, but length is six inches shorter than a standard queen size. So a queen size RV mattress is a little bit shorter, which is a pain for me because I'm six foot. So my feet hang off. A good deal on this bed soon as we did get it we scrapped the mattress that came with it and we ordered a Zinus uh, memory foam green tea mattress or whatever for it I'm going to say it was maybe maybe 300 bucks something like that but I mean it's a lot more comfortable than what came with it from the factory both sides here you have storage Kind of can hang up some clothes and all. We don't have a separated bedroom. I mean, all it has is a privacy curtain, which we really don't use. The TV that you see back here, it did have the uh, jack back here for it and the power outlet was there, but it did not come with a TV. I purchased that TV and got a swing arm mount and I mounted actually, well, let me just show you so you can see. One second. I mount it with a swing arm to the cabinet. So the TV's not overly heavy or anything. So I figured that uh, mounting it to the cabinet would hold up fine. The walls to these things are very thin. I think it's like uh, maybe two inches pushing that, one and a half to two inches thick. So I didn't want to try to put screws and try to find the uh, whatever type studs are in the wall. So I just mounted it to the cabinet and it's worked out well so far. I don't think it's gonna fall or anything. I'll give you a shot of it this way. So you can come in the door. 
And first thing you got is your kitchen. Um, it didn't come with a TV at all, so we mounted that TV as well. And then right here you have a couch. The couch kind of rolls into a, a bed as well if you wanted to use it. Here you have the little control center. Very simplistic. You can turn on the water pump if you have uh, water in the freshwater tank. Turn on the water heater. It's got lights. This is how you retract your awning. Uh, the remote control is to turn off the LED lights uh, that are under it on the outside. Fire extinguisher, of course. Built-in Furion receiver. Uh, you know, just picks up basic radio stations and has auxiliary input so you can plug something into it. We usually plug our satellite radio into it so we can just play uh, music on the speakers outside. Of course, like with all of them, this table, you take the legs out, you set the table in between them on the ledges, and then you put the cushions across to make another bed if you wanted to. It's not very big and not very comfortable for adults for sure. This is my project today, what I'm doing. I'm gonna install this keyless lock. It's not that I have an issue with the factory lock, really, that came in. Um, I wanna say it was, I guess, the first time we got this thing and went out. We took off, we got all the way out to the campsite and then realized I left the keys back at the house. So I had to drive, you know, do an hour drive time to, uh, to go get the keys, so. That was kind of frustrating so this will you know eliminate that ever happening even though we hadn't let it happen again um, but also the other concerning issue to it is that we had a large group of friends and we all went out camping at a campground together and we left to do something and somebody had something in our camper they needed to get and somebody else in the group had a forest river well they told me at the dealership that the handle lock was kind of universal it was a universal key with forest river stuff but the deadbolt lock supposedly they were all keyed differently so you wouldn't have the same key as somebody else well somebody else that had a forest river used their key to unlock the regular door handle and the deadbolt as well so i found that not to be true so just uh you know, one of the reasons in switching this out is to change the actual lock itself so other people can't just access our camper, but then also just to have the code so we don't have to carry keys around with us. So I think this is gonna be a pretty useful thing. I uh, ordered it from Amazon. I think it was about $150, but I'm gonna install that today. If anybody wants to see a video, uh, like a review and talk about after, and I can talk about uh, how it went in and all that stuff and how it works then let me know and I'll I'll try to do one but I'm not planning on doing one right now uh, let's see above here just storage cabinets so we have our walkie-talkies that we make our son when he's walking around campground carry a walkie-talkie and then of course if it's raining we have some card games and then we have the old uh, Nintendo we plug up to our TV so we can have some game time. Also have that old uh, Super Nintendo as well. And then we have a few DVD movies and things like that in the cabinet. Cabinets are pretty big up here. You know, it goes way back. And their connection is just a connection to the um, cable jack outside. Put a 32-inch Vizio right here, and it fit perfectly. The heating and air control. Dometic. Uh, I'd like to replace that. It's very cheap. <laughs> it's, uh, like as far as touching it, sometimes you really have to hit it to get it to change or do anything. It is, it, it's very cheaply made is all I can say about it. I don't really like that. I'd like to find a replacement that works a little better. Oh, uh, here's the vent where the actual pickup for the AC is. I need to take this filter out and clean it, but then it can come out right here, but I have it closed up. So it kind of forces it out all the other vents instead of just right here where it picks up. Pretty good bit of cabinet space in this. I do like that. I mean, this thing basically holds everything we need it to. We don't have an oven, but you know, you do have the stove top, which we've never used because 
we have the camp chef we have the blackstone griddle all that stuff you know when you cook in these things it kind of stinks it up it's a small space so uh we just don't use that a lot or i mean we've never used it <laughs> let me rephrase that but it's there if you need it um runs off gas so you got the two tanks on the front so if you need to use it uh, built-in microwave and we did have an issue with this the microwave just the high point it after right out of year i won't say about 10 or 11 months it just quit working it would come on and it would turn but it wouldn't heat so we took it back and they got it warranted out for us, switched it out, and it's been fine ever since. Dometic refrigerator. And then down at the bottom is kind of like the fuse center. Also on the floor down there you'll see is a uh, CO2 detector. Or no, CO2, yeah, carbon monoxide detector. So basically, if you have a gas leak in here, it'll come on, which could have probably saved our lives at one point. Um, come to find out, you have to turn the gas on, the gas tanks on to run the hot water heater because ours is not electric, it's gas only. And so when you turn the gas on, everything has access to it. Well, apparently my son had, was playing with this and turned one of the burners on and we didn't know it. And we went to bed and in the AM hours, that alarm started going off. And I couldn't figure out why. I didn't smell gas or smell anything. And we all got up and I was trying to figure out how to take that thing off or turn it off and just groggy as anything. And uh, I started fanning it and it went off. And then I sat here with it on the bench and then I looked across and noticed one of the knobs was turned on. So <laughs> I'm glad that thing's installed. Refrigerator. They got a decent amount of space, you know, you're not going to load it down with a bunch of stuff. It doesn't get super cold, but it does work. So it has a refrigerator and freezer. Uh, it can run off gas or electric. Then we have our bunks. And you can raise that bottom bunk up and it has storage up under it. It's kind of a pain to get it with one hand, so... Not really going to do that right off. Top bunk has a window. Both of them have a light. Um, just has a privacy curtain. What I don't like about this model is some models will have stairs to get up on the top bunk. This one doesn't. My son's five and sometimes he still struggles a little bit to get up and down. So, and of course all kids want to sleep on the top bunk. Uh, one, I think he likes the window, but uh, something about just being up high they prefer. So I wish, I guess in this one, the way the layout is, it'd be very hard to incorporate steps without having to take them down every time to get in the bathroom. But I wish, you know, somehow we did have steps there. I myself have slept in the bottom bunk. And I will say, even though not too far away is an AC vent, um, you close that privacy curtain and it gets really hot in there in that little cubby dark in there as well it does have a power outlet and it does have a light so these are basically like twin beds in the back here we have a sink as well and I replaced the faucet in it I just went it had a plain little white one you know base thing um, it was just you know just really cheap stuff base model uh, I just replaced it with a chrome finish one that was actually made of metal a little bit better grade i uh, got the cabinet here and like vanity mirror cabinet storage underneath we mainly keep like towels and stuff in here um, there's not a lot of room because it has that block off plate there and that's because it has plumbing up under there that goes to the bathtub so that bottom part's blocked off and with the pipes or the sink, you don't have a lot of room in there, but you can get some towels in there. And then the bathroom. So it has like a skylight and vent. Got an AC duct in there, which is good because I was in a camper one time 
that didn't and when you close the door uh it was very hot in there <laughs> you sweat to death um the toilet so i i had the dealership replace it i've replaced toilets and houses i don't know how many times but i wasn't really sure how they work or go in an rv and it's something in that tight space i really just didn't want to fool with so it had a standard toilet bowl in it and me being the size that i am i wanted an elongated bowl so i think i paid i think it was 300 dollars maybe 350 something like that to get the elongated toilet bowl and installation uh, these work like all the rest of them basically you just hit the foot pedal to drain it out uh, for anybody that doesn't know uh, guideline wise what you normally do is the foot pedal you'll just hit it just enough to barely open the valve and it'll put a little water into the bowl and then you go to the bathroom and then and then you push the foot pedal all the way down and it opens that and it'll drop all the anything in the toilet bowl down into the waste tank had a toilet paper holder installed right here but it's right here at the door and it stuck out at the door so coming in and out it would often get bumped and it worked its way loose so we finally just took it off it was more of a pain than anything uh let's see the tub standard deal i did replace the shower wand with a little bit nicer one had a very basic little small deal there um you don't have much water i guess well the water pressure varies by the um campground you're at and your pressure regulator as if i'm assuming that you run one but uh replace that just so you can take a little bit better shower only disadvantage really this tub i hate that it doesn't have like vinyl walls because water splashes against the walls everywhere i can't help but think that that's eventually going to be bad so basically after we take a shower we try to wipe down the interior walls every time and the other thing about the tub is the support up under it so i, I guess it's maybe just my weight but when i stand in this then it flexes a lot which worries me it just feels like it might break so we'll just see i try to use the bathhouse now these days anyway but every now and then we just take a shower in here uh you will see i bought another toilet seat that i need to put on there today too because the factory one that came with this cracked and like i said that, that might not be a flaw from the manufacturer it might just be our weight and sitting on it i don't know but it cracked anyway so i have another seat that i need to put on there and that's another project i'm gonna do today before we go but that's that does it for this little tour you can see it from this angle um oh yeah ac comes out the top uh, when you turn the heat on, it only comes from those vents at the bottom. So the heat isn't very evenly spread. So you have a lot of like hot and cold spots in the camper. That's kind of an interesting deal. I'm, it's not the best design, but I mean, it does work. Um, alternatives, you know, you can buy little tower heaters and things like that and put in here, but it's just whatever you prefer. Otherwise, I guess that about wraps it up. You know, I will say that, you know, the the kids enjoy camping. Uh, we enjoy camping and going. Um, a camper is a pretty big investment. If you buy it new, you know, they are pretty expensive. Um, you know, I want to say, and don't quote me on this, I might not be right. If memory serves, I want to say this one was like 17000 18000 something like that. Um, and it's like I said, this is more of like a, a base model. It doesn't have any slides. Um, it doesn't have the outdoor kitchen. It doesn't have a lot of the bells and whistles, but we looked at it like we wanted to be able to get out there and camp with everyone with our family. And, uh, we basically looked at it like we would just really be sleeping and doing very basic stuff in the camper itself. Uh, because when you go camping, you spend most of your time outside so you know we we get outside and fish and just hang out with friends and swim in the lake and all that type stuff so we spend very little time 
inside the camper. Uh, even when it's raining, we take our pop-up tents and usually just sit outside even in the rain unless it gets really bad. So, you know, we have talked about and we have thought about uh, upgrading to a, a bigger size uh, with more room because we have found that when it's raining or, you know, whatever conditions that we might be stuck in here, it is a little cramped, uh, even for just a family of four. Uh, I would like to have a little bit, a little bit more room, you know, mainly in a little bit more of a seating area. We've had times where it's been raining and other kids have come here and wanted to play video games with my son and it just gets kind of tight with them in here and us trying to walk around them. So in the future, it may be something we look at, but for now, I mean, this camper serves its purpose. And I mean, I don't, you know, for you get what you pay for. So I don't have anything ultimately negative to say about it. I, I think it's a good camper. Uh, it's the first one I've ever owned. So the only comparisons that I have are, you know, friends campers that I've been in and looked at. But other than that, you know, I would say that this was a good purchase. Um, everything in these campers are, are made very cheap. I mean, cabinets and hinges and the wood, it's all like particle board and really thin stuff. I mean, it all is made cheap. And you get what you pay for. My main worry and concern really is going to be the roof. Um, a lot of people have told me that, you know, you can get 10 years out of a roof, but sometimes you get like five or six. I guess it depends on how much is out in the sun and how well you take care of it. We don't have a garage or any kind of uh, shelter or anything to pull it in, so we try to cover it in the winter. And since we've had it, we've gotten on the roof once and put the UV treatment down on it, which is kind of a pain to do when you're big people and don't like heights but we're gonna try to do that a little more often to protect it and make it last but we'll see how that goes but anyway i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you got something out of it like i say it's really just a, a tour of the camper and you know if you're looking at getting one or you've never had a camper before maybe you picked up on a few little tips and see things that might give you ideas about looking for one um only regrets when i bought this one um, like I said, this is the budget one, so if you're trying to save money and want to get a new one and you have a family of four, you know, this might be a good option. Um, they do have smaller ones if you have a smaller family. Uh, that might be a better option, you know, save a little more money. Uh, I do wish that I would have just gone ahead and gotten one a little bit bigger with a slide, but that's in the past. Other than that, I mean, I don't, I'm not really missing anything else. I don't overly care about the outdoor kitchen because I've got the griddle and all that stuff anyway that I set up on a table. Um, nothing else that I really wish it had that I'm missing. So thanks for watching. Please let me know in the, uh, the comments if you have any questions and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. This is not a endorsement video whatsoever. Um, I don't make any money on YouTube. I don't make any money from any of this stuff. I do these videos just hoping to help people, hoping some people get something out of them and enjoy them. And, uh, and that's basically it. Kind of just more of a hobby than anything. So, like I said, let me know if you have any questions. And thanks for watching.